Hello, beautiful goddesses, beautiful temple body, sisters. Hmm. Welcome. Welcome to today's temple body Tuesday. Just wanted to take a moment to arrive, to feel into our space. Welcome, welcome, sisters. So today's topic I was feeling into was coming home to your divine union. And before I dive into this incredible topic, I want to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me yet or haven't, we haven't met the online space yet. My name is Anya Devi. I am a temple body artist, temple body mentor for embodied feminine leadership path with Sophia Tom. And um, I do a lot of shadow work. I teach yoga. That's one of my deepest passions. Um, I offer all of myself for the benefit of all, all my practices, all my teachings. Um, yeah, just truly being an embodiment of the goddess and bringing home to myself all parts of who I am, all parts of who I remember myself to be through my practices, through what I offer, through the way I live and embody myself. So one of my passions also is emotional healing, emotional clearing. I do energy work with Um, muscle testing, meridians, organs, emotions, tracking them down and uh, releasing, letting go. And through this work, a lot of shadow work comes through as well as finding the balance, finding the balance within, which is finding that divine inner union. And so... Mm, I am honored to show up today while Sophia is traveling back home to Costa Rica from California where her beloved Brendan had um, a heart procedure done and recovering, healing, and they're returning home to recover even more. So I'm always sending Brendan healing and love on your journey and Sophia for your divine union to feel whole and healthy and vibrant and so for me my personal story is I don't remember truly having the masculine energy in my life I had plenty of feminine energy growing up, losing my mother for a few years, being raised by the feminine. So, you know, that story can go really long and really detailed, but I'll go and and I'll tell you a little bit about the masculine part that was missing in my life. And only later in life tracking the history, almost like a collective level of what we're going through. 
each one of us individually is overcoming something for yourself as well as for the collective. And that's my favorite part of this work that we're doing. We're not only healing ourselves, we're healing humanity. By doing this work, by remembering who we are, by desiring that inner balance, harmony, reunion of two beloveds, of two energies to come into harmony so that we can feel whole, we can remember who we are, we can really fully show up in our lives, fully sharing ourselves, who we are, and all of our gifts. One of my other gifts is yoga, which brought me into this divine inner, inner union work. And I will also be co-teaching, co-leading a yoga teacher training for Danyasa this end of June and July. Uh, teaching with incredible staff of Danyasa yoga teachers, including Sophia as a, as a guest teacher. And so that's been my passion for many, many years. And through yoga, I got to meet these two parts of myself, the feminine and the masculine, the left and the right. In yoga traditions, we call it Shiva and Shakti. Shakti on the left, Shiva on the right. It is also known as Ida and Pingala, the two energies flowing in our bodies. The left nostril, the right nostril, in the breath and pranayama, we can breathe through the left in and out while holding the right and then the opposite and then alternate, bringing harmony, bringing what we need into our body vessel. So I had plenty of feminine in my life, but masculine was kind of missing out. Now looking back, I'm realizing, you know, where I come from and I'm from Russia, my mother country, was deeply wounded and our women lost their men our grandmothers lost their beloveds in world war ii in in world war one and throughout revolution and everything that has happened we have lost millions and millions of men and most of us didn't have grandfathers and most of our fathers were alcoholics, which is another incredible deep wound upon the earth. And as growing up, it was a mainly feminine energy, and I'm so grateful for it, for all the magic of the feminine that I get to carry and remember through my lineage, through the feminine touch that we experience. And in some cases, the feminine touch is not as light. The feminine touch may actually be um, wounded, wounding us as well. So it's, it's turning into the deep inner work of inner shadows, of inner wounds, of inner triggers, of all the inner pain that we hold towards the polarities, feminine or the masculine. And so when I was a teenager, I went seeking the masculine because it was simply missing in my life. Um, my father wasn't there. He was drinking heavily, going through his second and then his third marriage. And my desire was of some sort of revenge, some sort of revenge, that conditioning again upon the feminine to hate the masculine for betraying her and her mother and the grandmother's the grandmothers lost their men. So we all carry that wound of losing the masculine, losing the beloved 
tracing it back to ancient times of all women who have lost their beloved and all women who have been betrayed by the masculine. So we carry that deep resentment towards the external masculine in our lives that maybe didn't really do anything. And so this work, as it happens throughout the years of seeking, searching, something external, finally realizing truly it's internal, finding that inner divine union is internal work, is finding that kingdom of two beloveds marrying each other, of connecting their energies together. This is a beautiful mudra, and mudra in yoga is a hand gesture, hasta mudra, and this mudra in particular is called vajra pradana, a beautiful mudra of unshakable trust, where two energies connect, intervine, and they can spiral together and flow and ebb and find each other finally within, no matter what external ex extraction happened to the feminine or the masculine side, we can carry so much pain and wounding from our childhood years. So like for me, that revenge and the desire to pay back the masculine, like how can I? And also so many of us are deeply wounded by the masculine and we carry that pain and unforgiveness within us. And what we carry, carry within us, we become. So sitting and facing these stories, stories of what does it mean for me to be in the divine union? Because usually we do turn to external examples, to external relationships that we've had. So another beautiful mudra, if you'd like to try, if you're listening in stillness, the right hand inside the left, just like this, and you can place it on your knees. Just hold it at your belly or at your knees. The right hand inside the left is a beautiful mudra of the feminine holding the masculine. The feminine holding the masculine. And just really embracing all parts of the masculine that you are recognizing your inner masculine your inner divine masculine the reflection of your divine feminine the reflection of the goddess a lot of the time in in feminine practices we reject the masculine because we feel so much pain and and almost like anger and this rising and passion against everything that, that the masculine has done wrong. And so we kind of are alone, alone in this. And the goddess continues to wield her shield and her sword and she continues to fight her battles and defend herself and protect herself while not recognizing her own divine masculine that is within and that didn't actually hurt her. That's the incredible, beautiful realization of the truth. Seeing the true divine masculine within that never hurt her. That divine feminine within the essence of the goddess, the essence of the mother, where is that father essence, the divine masculine father essence? My father was absent. And so 
finding my own inner masculine over decades was such a journey. And so then, if you're still holding this mudra, you can switch. And now the right hand holds the left. And this is the masculine holding the feminine. Bhairava and Bhairavi mudra. The feminine, the masculine. And it's the fierce form, the fierce form of devotion. Devotion to each other when they get to hold each other, when they get to sit with each other, when they get to see and heal together. So it took some time to recognize all these deep wounds inside I was holding towards the masculine that at some point hurt me really deeply and caused all this wounding on top of what we already carry from our grandmothers and mothers. All the betrayal, all the, the shame, anything that we feel, the smallness, the misery. Finally letting all that collapse and crumble, recognizing my own divine union within that is fully held by the masculine within. It's that inner resurrection of the king, the goddess recognizing the God, the divine masculine creator, co-creator, that co-creates with her all of life. The dance between Shiva and Shakti, when they finally meet in the heart, Ida and Pingala flow through our body. The divine inner union, the sacred marriage. It's It's harmony, it's balance, it's wisdom, it's pain, and also it's joy and bliss. It is sitting and feeling each other's sorrows and doing this work for ourselves and for the collective whole. Reuniting the divine union within all of our hearts, really activating Activating that uh, divine inner union template within our hearts, turning it on, bringing it online within ourselves. No longer holding any grudges against the masculine or the feminine within us. Really integrating all these practices and all that we have been working on and all that has come into our lives where we are now on our paths, really let it all go and merge, merge and see that inner divine beloved within you. Resurrect him, bring him to life, see him, merge with him, tell him your needs, tell him all that you desire. He is Shiva. She is Shakti. They are devoted to each other. They dance together in this Lila Rasa. The dance, the juicy dance of love, of truth, of devotion, of full honoring of each other and the true divine submission to the divine to be on the same service, path, desire, to be present in the world, to live our lives fully. So, yeah, just the divine inner union that's coming online on the planet through humanity the sacred marriage. It is also known as Hieros Gamos. Hieros 
becomes the sacred marriage within the Shiva and Shakti. And there's a beautiful story that I love to tell about Shiva. One of his stories is, I don't see any comments, but I'm actually not sure if, um, if I can see them from Sophia's page. So I'm just going to look down here. So I will look at them in a bit. A beautiful story about Shiva. Shiva is the destroyer and so that the new life can be reborn. Everything must die in order for rebirth. We must let go of everything to rebirth our soul, to really come back online fully. And so in Shiva's story, he's devoted to the feminine always and forever. He's devoted to the poor. He's devoted to the homeless. He's devoted, you know, to the to the light. He's devoted to kindness and compassion, to the beautiful Christ consciousness. It's that Christed energy of a masculine that is here to truly serve to serve the feminine. And in this story, there was this goddess Saraswati. And Saraswati is the goddess of creativity. She's the goddess of studies and wisdom. And she's always busy doing something, creating something in the world. She forgets everything and, and she has a, a beloved um, Brahma who created all of the worlds in the myths of, of India. And he created all of the worlds and he was obsessed with Saraswati. He was a little obsessed with her. And he would want to marry her, but she was too busy for him. And so he kept pursuing her and watching her everywhere she was. And so she would move around the world from north to the east, to the south, to the west. And so to kind of avoid him a little bit doing her work. And so then he grew a face to face the north. He grew a face to the east, to the south, to the west. He grew four faces and so he could see her for wherever she was. And she didn't like that at all. Like which one of us likes that, right? And so she escaped into the underworld and he couldn't see her. So then he grew a fit face so he could see her wherever she was, underworld, above. He could just really track her. <laughs> And so she was very, very upset and, and um, I'm sure, right, passionately angry at this um, pursuit. And in this moment, it was none other that Shiva came and he is so in devotion to the feminine, to anything that dishonors the feminine. He will rise as the warrior Virabhadra, as is the story of the warrior, which is a completely other story. And, and, in this, and in this specific story, Shiva comes and he cuts off the head of Brahma with five faces. And he cuts off the ego of the masculine mind that wants to obsess, that wants to control, that wants to just constantly see what the feminine is doing. And as Shiva was walking around the world, carrying this head in his hand, dragging it around, it's almost like the ego, the death of an ego 
within our own selves all these stories always happen within our own selves this masculine ego that's oppressing instead of devotion so this oppressing ego begins to drain Shiva's energy and begins to siphon his energy his vitality his strength and Shiva begins to be weakened and weakened and weakened as the masculine often is weakened and weakened and weakened with corruption and this again is all from within our own selves it's this work of inner pure just clearing everything clearing everything away recognizing every story understanding every corrupted part of the masculine that is within our, our own selves every corrupted part of the feminine that is in service to that corrupted masculine within our own selves how can we choose discernment in intention how can we choose integrity truth kindness compassion and unconditional love there's no conditions here in the divine inner union and so as Shiva became weaker and weaker he fell he fell down in passed out and it was Saraswati who came the goddess of creativity and healing arts the goddess of beautiful devotion to co-creation a beautiful wisdom and bringing wisdom back with love and creating this incredible marriage a sacred marriage of mind heart and womb this marriage of love wisdom and our feminine instinct and intuition to create life and healing in the world and so she came and she nurtured him and they threw away the ego mind and she healed him back to life and these two energies are this feminine and masculine it's like brother and sister together working healing serving the world doing their own mission work but together serving humanity so that's one story and uh yeah to to complete this temple body tuesday transmission really I want to honor this deep inner hieros gamos hiero gamic work of the union of divine feminine and masculine however that looks like for you whether it's shiva and shakti whether it's christ and mary whether it's isis and osiris white buffalo calf woman and her um beloved king arthur and his beloved who is your divine union what is your divine inner union here to bring through is there harmony and union within that divine union or is there still some resentment or grudges or pain that needs to be seen and addressed and felt and healed and released and danced through the dance part is so incredible with temple body arts we dance here every month for the new sisters we dance here every month for seven days between the dark and the full moon and we dance our intentions and we dance through the shadows the obstacles anything that stands in the way and we reclaim our wholeness and our fullness is in the divine inner union and that's how we serve from that place of wholeness and of divine harmony within and we honor ourselves and yeah just really deep dive 
into this work. So I would love to hear any anything from you. How is your divine inner union? What is it like? Is it there? Yeah, share anything you'd like with me. And uh, to finish up, I do have a beautiful, incredible offering coming up next week. If you are around Costa Rica and you would love to make a final minute decision to come to a beautiful retreat in Costa Rica, we begin with four nights in the beautiful mountains, Chiripo Mountains, in the jungle. And we complete with three nights at the ocean in Dominical, at Danyasa, beautiful echo retreat center, a yoga, beautiful yoga retreat center. Um, our beautiful mentor, Sophia Tom. And um, this is a seven night healing transformational journey through sacred medicine, through practices of divine inner union through yoga, meditation, mantra, mudra, galactic, multidimensional teachings, activations, beautiful feminine practices, as well as for the masculine. So if you have a partner, we only have probably one room left, one or two rooms. Please reach out, please reach out to me. Um, just message me on I will tag my, I am tagged here and I will place a booking link with me. Seriously, just make a leap, say yes to yourself, transform, embody, divine inner union. Yes, please. It's on the menu for this retreat and we invite you and I'm here truly to offer you this incredible healing. And if that isn't working for you, I invite you to come to a yoga teacher training, 200 hour YTT happening at the end of June through July for three weeks at Danyasa. Incredible, beautiful experience of wisdom, of yoga, and, and all that is alive within us. <sighs> yes, and I think that's what I'm here to share today. Thank you for tuning in whenever you do on replay. would love to hear any reflections from your sisters. Many blessings. May all of our practices always be offered for the benefit of all. And as we heal the divine inner union internally within ourselves, we heal it for all of humanity. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace to all. Blessed be, sisters. So much love. Mm.